So how do you achieve the American dream if your dad doesn't own an emerald mine? You walk into the store, you plunk down a dollar, and with nothing but luck, you win the lottery. And while that's a great dream, of course, I mean, we all know the odds are astronomical, but what if we could maybe control those odds, or better yet, eliminate them completely, illegally winning a mind-boggling $24 million over the course of a decade? Eddie Tipton's considered the greatest lottery cheat of all time. But you gotta ask, how the hell did he pick the winning lottery numbers multiple times for over 10 years. Well, it's kind of simple. Eddie Tipton worked for the lottery. On December 29, 2010, the hot lotto in Iowa held its drawing for a $16.4 million jackpot. Now, the winning ticket had been purchased at a Quick Trip convenience store in Des Moines, Iowa. Why would you live there? But for someone, the American dream, you know, became very real. But then the ticket went unclaimed for days, and then it was weeks, and then it was months. Well, it's been almost a month since we had announced that we had a hot lotto, a $16.5 million hot lotto winner. Person uh, who has purchased or owns this ticket probably doesn't know that they have it. And then it was nearly a year. Now, believe it or not, the lottery officials actually want the money to be claimed. You know, it's good PR to have the big winner holding a big old check. And in the meantime, they were flooded with over 200 fake winner claims. Oh, my friend who died in a car accident had the ticket. The winning ticket to my grandma's casket. But what the public didn't know was they had a video of the person buying the ticket along with the serial number. And anyone that wanted to take the claim had to verify both of those, which no one could nearly a year later. Now, public reminder Reminders were issued every single month, and it even made national news about this unclaimed ticket. Because one year after that purchase date, the $16 million ticket would expire to nothing. Now, 30 days before the expiration date, Canadian attorney Philip Johnston called in and provided what no one else could, the correct serial numbers for the winning lottery ticket. And he had said he had purchased the ticket himself, but then said he could not personally deliver the ticket because he was too sick to come down from Canada. Maybe it sounds a little sketch, but they asked him what he wore on the day that he bought it. And Philip paused. He was wearing a tweed jacket with dress pants and dress shoes. Now, although we gave the correct serial number, the man in the video buying the winning ticket was wearing a hoodie and sweatpants. He was lying, so they didn't give him the jackpot. Now, a week later, Philip Johnston calls in again, but now with a different story, stating that he had actually told a little white lie, that it wasn't him that bought the ticket, but he was representing the winner of it, and he was a wealthy man who wanted to remain anonymous. Now, there's just one problem with that. It's against the rules of the Iowa lottery. All winners' names have to be made public, but they still didn't want to reveal the winner's name. But then on the final day, down to the last hour before the $16 million ticket expired, an attorney from New York shows up with the actual winning ticket in his hand. We've been looking for 365 days for this, and with one hour and 50 minutes left, uh, the two individuals you just met brought us the what we believe is the winning ticket for the hot lotto uh, jackpot. But this time, the ticket was signed by a trust in the Belize, and the trust beneficiary was a shell company in Belize, and who was the president of that shell company? Oh, it was Philip Johnston, the attorney that called in the first time. We've got to make sure that we're paying the right amount and the money to the proper and appropriate persons, so we are not paying this particular ticket today. Then, in a last-ditch effort, the attorneys asked if they could claim the money in cash and then turn it over to the state and they could give it to charity. But lottery lawyers declined based on concerns about the legality of the purchase, possession, and presentation of the ticket. We couldn't verify the winner. Now, the attorneys were so angry at this point that they actually threatened to sue the Iowa lottery until the they realized that they would have to actually reveal the real winner's name in the court case. The lottery received yet another letter. The purchaser of the ticket has elected to remain anonymous and withdraw the claim. And to think all that person had to do was provide birth date and address, and they would have walked away with millions of dollars. And the $16 million jackpot went to no one. Now, why were they trying so hard to hide the name of this ticket winner? Was the real winner possibly murdered? Maybe a victim of blackmail? Or maybe even theft? Either way, the whole thing stunk and the FBI was called in to investigate. Now, it seemed a bit strange when Eddie Tipton, the security director for the multi-state lottery, lived in a 8,500 square foot mansion decked out with a 20 seat custom home theater and a basketball court. Now, Eddie didn't make that much money. His coworkers at the lottery often wondered how the hell could he afford a baller mansion when he only made about $90,000 a year. Now, he told his lottery co-workers that his house was just his one vice and that even though he was single and in his 40s, that one day he was going to have a huge family. And this story kind of made sense. It was 2007. A lot of people bought homes they couldn't afford. So no one, not even his co-workers at the lottery, suspected a thing. 
Now, as the FBI investigated the case, it kind of went cold. There wasn't a lot of evidence. There was too many dead ends. Until four years later, it ended up on prosecutor Rob Sands' desk. Now, nobody expected him to get anywhere, but Rob Sands was the hot new prosecutor on the block that wanted to make a name for himself. But all Rob had to work with was a grainy video of the dude buying the ticket that they didn't know and the name of some Better Call Saul Canadian attorney that called in with the winning ticket. So investigators flew up to Canada to interview the first attorney. But then he said that he was actually actually collecting the ticket on behalf of another attorney that was from Texas. And when they went to that attorney, he said the winning ticket had been given to him by Texas businessman Robert Rhodes. But Robert Rhodes looked and sounded nothing like the guy in that video. So four years after having the lottery drawing held, Rob Sands released that video nationwide to ask for help in trying to identify the guy in that video, along with an audio track of his voice. Now, within days, thousands of people called in to the FBI and it sounded like my grandpa. Oh, it sounded like my coworker. But one name kept coming up. You see, dozens and dozens of lottery employees from across the country had called in and instantly recognized the voice as Eddie Tipton. But this was a little hard to believe. I mean, Eddie Tipton was the security director for the multi-state lottery, meaning he's the guy in charge of making sure no one cheated and legally couldn't even buy lotto tickets. But what were the odds that Eddie Tipton could also pick the winning numbers? The coincidences were too far. So how, how were the winning numbers picked for the lottery? Well, back in the day, the numbers were put on ping pong balls, whipped around in a cage, and one by one were taken out in the public eye so everyone could see the contest was legit. But even this system had problems when lottery workers cheated the game by filling some of the balls with water to improve their own odds. And then when those balls exploded on live TV, a new system was needed. Now today, lotteries pick the winning numbers using computers, but to understand the real genius of how Eddie Tipton cheated, we need to remember that computers never do anything randomly. So how do you get a random number on a computer? Well, you actually kind of don't. So it starts with an input number and runs it through a complex math problem called the random number generator to output a final number that looks random looks. But if you have that same input number, you will always get that same final number. And that's kind of the problem. So to get a truly random final number, one that you could use for the lottery, you need a random input number. So lotteries measure the radiation of a americium-241 in the air. That number is plugged into a random number generator, and that comes up with the winning lotto numbers. Now, what's a americium-241, you might ask? Well, it's the microscopic nuclear fallout from weapons tests over the last 50 years that surrounds everyone on Earth. I mean, it really is no big problem. But Remember, each time you take that same input number and run it through the math problem, you will always get that same final random number. So like in a perfect theoretical sense, it actually isn't random, but that was the crack that Eddie Tipton managed to exploit. Now, in January of 2015, Eddie Tipton was arrested for defrauding the Iowa lottery. Now, the feds had a decent amount of evidence against him. Video was clear, the audio analysis matched up with his voice, and even though Eddie said he was out of town the day that ticket was bought, well, his own phone records show that he was in that store at that time when the winning ticket was bought. Now, in custody, he lawyered up. He didn't say a word about how or if he even did it, and the feds had no idea how he did it. So the only thing they could nail him for was buying a lottery ticket as a lottery worker. Now again, these fraud charges against Tipton, we're told, are based solely on the belief that he attempted to falsely redeem a lottery ticket and have nothing to do with any, any evidence that he was somehow able to use his position and expertise to manipulate the game. But, but then the skeletons came out of Eddie's closet because Eddie had gotten his job as the director of security for the lottery as a convicted felon for burglary. How does that even happen? Now in court, Eddie would demand a fast and swift trial, but prosecutor Rob Sands actually thought this was odd. Most white collar criminals don't get caught on the first time they commit a crime. He thought maybe Eddie wanted to shorten the investigation time because maybe there was more fraudulent lottery tickets out there that they hadn't discovered yet. Now, when Eddie was asked about who Robert Rhodes was to him, you know, the Texas business guy that had the $16 million ticket, well, Eddie said he had no idea who he was. He didn't know what he looked like. He never even heard of the name. But they were friends on Facebook. They had been co-workers for the last 10 years. They were best friends.
When Eddie Tipton was asked what he did for work, he had failed to mention one little detail, that he was the guy that wrote the program that picked the winning lottery numbers. Now at this point, it looked like an inside job, or it was a huge amount of coincidences that had led Eddie Tipton's best friend to win the lottery. Now, there was one huge problem with this entire case. The computer that the numbers were used to pick the winning lottery numbers had been wiped clean three times over. Now, although there was no evidence about how this actually happened, the feds had a decent theory. Now, the Hot Lotto uses two computers that are locked in a room that only five people have access to. And you guessed it, Eddie Tipton was one of those people. Now, inside of that room, there's a locked plexiglass box that you need two keys from two employees to open up, and then they pick the winning lottery numbers. And this whole process is recorded on cameras 24 seven. So how could have this hacking been done? Those cameras that record, record one frame every minute. Meaning that theoretically, Eddie Tipton could have gone inside the room for some routine maintenance with another coworker. While that coworker was turned away, in the span of 59 seconds, Eddie Tipton could have put in a USB key, changed an estimated two lines of code, and then he would know what the winning lottery numbers are that only he would know about. But in Eddie's defense, there was no evidence of any of this. All of the witnesses testified Eddie Tipton was the man in that video. Even the person that had sold him that lotto ticket and the hot dog said it was him. But Eddie Tipton's defense had a rebuttal to that. They said that that was actually impossible because Eddie Tipton is not a hot dog guy, that he's more of a jack in the box man. And honestly, I can tell. So what, what happened here? Eddie Tipton bought the winning lottery ticket, gave that to a good friend named Robert Rhodes, who then gave it to his attorney, who then gave it to another attorney that specializes in hiding money, and that's how he got to the situation. So Eddie had access, Eddie knew how to commit the crime, there were cell phone records, Facebook messages, all going back 10 years that linked him to Robert Rhodes. So the jury would rule guilty, and Eddie would be sentenced to 10 years in jail. But the story is far from over. Now, remember when Eddie said he wanted a fast and swift trial, and Rob Sands thought, maybe that was a little bit odd because there was more fraud out there. Well, after the trial, the feds would come through 44,000 winning lottery tickets across all of the states for over a decade. And they would cross-reference the winners with Eddie Tipton's Facebook friends, phone numbers, LinkedIn's, and uh, some strange coincidences came up. On November 23rd, 2005, Eddie Tipton's brother won a $600,000 jackpot in Colorado. Eddie Tipton's program was used in Colorado. On December 29, 2007, Robert Rhodes had won $800,000 in Wisconsin. Eddie Tipton's program was used in Wisconsin. On November 23rd, 2011, Kyle Kahn, who was a good friend of Eddie Tipton's brother, won $1.2 million in Oklahoma. Eddie Tipton's program was used there. And on December 29, 2010, in Kansas, Eddie Tipton's ex-girlfriend that he met on eHarmony won $22,000. Was all this a bit strange? Was this all just God's coincidences? Now, besides Eddie Tipton being the main connection, you might notice that it was only two dates that were winning, November 23rd and December 29th. Now, again, I mean, there was no evidence of this program until they found a storage unit that had had one computer that was used to do the winning lotto numbers in 2000. Right there in plain sight on the computer, they discovered the code that Eddie had actually used, and it was exactly how they theorized. On those two dates, it would put in a specific input number so that the random number generator would be something that Eddie always knew for the winning numbers for the lottery. So with enough evidence to tie him to five hack lottery drawings, Eddie Tipton finally confessed. Mr. Tipton, I'm Kim from KCCI. What's your reaction to the sentencing today? Shock. That's it. But Eddie claimed that he was never in the lottery scam business and actually said he was a accidental felon. He said one day he was playing around with the program and realized a crucial flaw, noticed he could exploit it, and then just left the hacked program there for over a decade. I mean, all the situation was, was a geeky computer hacker who was just messing around with the program who's so genius that he just, oh, sorry. Oh. And Eddie really believes this, stating, I'm a single guy making about 100,000 a year. I didn't need the money. With that, Eddie Tipton will be sentenced to 25 years in prison, which you would be surprised to learn Eddie's out on parole and still claims that he had never done it.